we're looking forward to getting back on the court, try to rectify the uh, defense since obviously it wasn't a very good outing uh, Saturday with the defense in the floor. So, you know, Old Miss is a good team. They're not easy to play against at their place. And we're coming off a, uh, a bad loss, particularly on the defensive end. So, you know, we're, we're looking to get back to playing somebody else. I think we've had two good days of practice. It's pretty easy to get the guys' attention when you give up 117. But I did think we had two pretty solid days on, on the defensive end and trying to fix some stuff. So, it's, uh, I mean, I think as you've seen this year, it's not easy to win on the road. I think last week there was 18 losses amongst AP top 25 teams and 15 of them are on the road and 11 were the non-ranked teams. So winning on the road is not easy at this level. This will not be an easy game at Old Miss. Uh, shoot, even if it's at home, it wouldn't be easy. They're good. I mean, they've got very good players. You know, Morrell is one of the best players in program history. Flanagan's a very good player. It's been in the SEC for a long time, you know, between his time at Auburn and here. You know, they've got Brakefield, who was at Duke and transferred in, is a very skilled foreman, and then they've got real rim protection, you know, at their five spot. And shoot, their point guard Murray's been – they've got four guys that are scoring at a pretty high level, and he's one of them. He's quick. He gets in the paint. So we've had some issues with guys getting in the paint on us before. So it's going to be a tough game for us defensively. We, we're going to have to we're gonna have to pick up our defense significantly from Saturday. Yeah, too, if I can. First off, how's Reitzel progressing? And, and second, I mean, what kind of ownership do you sense that guys are taking in defense? Yeah, I mean, it, it's – I think they were embarrassed. It'd be hard not to after giving up 117. So I'm embarrassed that team I coach was that poor defensively. But, you know, it it's, comes and goes uh, with the ownership. It's – you know, you get embarrassed, play really hard. I told him it's got to become who you are. You can't be – you get motivated after a bad outing. And so, you know, they're motivated right now because they just gave up 117. We'll see if we face a little adversity tomorrow, how long the motivation lasts, and can they make it become who they are rather than just, you know – short motivational I'm gonna play hard because I get embarrassed the last play or the last game or the last four minutes so I do think they enough of them care but we'll see if they care enough to make a, a lasting change and then right so with the head injury stuff it's it's every day you got to reevaluate make sure he's not getting a headache so uh, I'm, he's still not 100 percent gonna play tomorrow but you know it's like every morning you got to wake up for a uh, Clark and Dr. Bittner are the ones that are handling that, but yeah, it'd be it'd be nice to have him back sooner rather than later. But you also don't want to rush him because uh, you don't these things could go on and on if you don't handle it correctly in the right manner. So we're gonna do it the right way, not rush him back. But looking forward to getting him back as soon as we can. You've had a lot of success coming off of losses, being able to bounce back from losses, especially in SEC play this year. What do you think about this group has led to that, and have you seen some of those same things over the past couple of days? Yeah, I think we got some competitors with some pride. I mean, you go down the list. Like, I thought Aaron Estrada has been great in practice, his defensive effort. Like, he's a guy that's played a lot of basketball, that's playing in his last season of college basketball. His eligibility is up. He, he doesn't want to look like we looked on Saturday. Uh, you know, I don't want us to look like that for him. Think about, like, I thought Grant Nelson's been a lot better. His leadership, Nick Pringle's had two of the best days he's ever had. You know, you kind of go down the list and think Mark understands he's got to guard better. And he's, you know, thought yesterday in practice he was really good. You know, that was our one hard day we went. You know, we wasn't going to kill him the day before a game, but we, we were off Sunday. We went hard yesterday. We went long. We went hard for the end of February, you know, and I think there's a lot of guys, you know, Ryland's one of our better defenders and he wasn't where he needed to be for us against Kentucky. I think, I think guys have some pride that, you know, you take a loss, like we're definitely not coming back and playing bad back to back. So, 
you know, it's going to be hard to get this win on the road, but I think our guys are going to play extremely hard trying to get the win. Um, who's come the furthest from the beginning of the season when you were harping on defense right out of the gate? And uh, among guys who weren't already good defensively, who now um, are there or are, are almost there? It's a good question. Um, day to day, week to week, it probably changes. I mean, Ryland wasn't very good in our first scrimmage against TCU. He's He picked it up pretty quickly, and he's been pretty good for the most part. I think Sears is showing he's got the capabilities of being a really good defender. I thought he was great yesterday in practice. Uh, but, you know, it, it, it's probably a little – too early to say if he's, you know, we'll see over the next two weeks how much he he improves. I'd say, like Sam Walters was a disaster on defense at the beginning of the year, like to put it bluntly, and he knows it. And he just never really had to guard anybody. You know, he's an elite shooter and he's going to stay in the game in high school no matter what. They'd go to a zone, whatever. Like he's come a long ways. He's actually not a disaster anymore. I'm not going to come out and say he's Kawhi Leonard yet, but he's come a long ways. He's six nine. He's learning. He's put some weight on. He's got some toughness to him. I thought he had a tough offensive rebound put back against Florida. He had the tip where we got it. So, you know, you see his toughness and physicality starting to come into play on the defensive end, on the on the offensive rebounding side. I think Sam maybe has made a, as big a jump. Now, he had the biggest jump to make, but he's maybe made the biggest jump. And, you know, we could – ow. He wasn't very good against Kentucky. None of us were really, but I'd like to see him bounce back and really play well against Old Miss because I think he's been trying, really trying to be about the right things and make a, a jump defensively. So, yeah, I, I don't. It's a hard question to ask because we had a lot of guys that need to make big jumps. Probably Sam need to make the biggest, and I think he maybe has made the biggest. From the beginning of the season, as it's become clear that like the defense is an issue that has lasted throughout, have you noticed teams coming at you differently game plan wise from then to now? You know what? I think some teams will push a little. You know, teams are afraid to run on us. Typically, they don't want to get a running match with us. But some teams have tried to get out and transition a little bit more to test our transition D because that's been a little suspect at times. And, Kentucky exposed us tremendously in transition. Uh, I actually hope teams keep trying to push it on, on us in transition because I obviously we'd like to get an up and down game, 80 plus possessions like we had Kentucky. We, we just need to do a much better job on our defensive end doing that. So I think teams maybe have tried to play a little faster in transition. You know, I, I just think they, Shoot, whatever they do well, we haven't been able to take it away. So I don't think teams are changing the game plan that much. They they go to what they do well, and we haven't been able to take it away very often, and they they keep going at it. So we're going to have to figure out how to take, take away what they do well better. We're going to have to figure out how to get back and guard and transition better. And, you know, we had the issue with the uh, defensive rebounding particularly the A&M game, but, you know, we were able to still score it well enough that game. The Florida game, we were able to offensive rebound ourselves enough that game. But, you know, Kentucky, who's not one of the better rebounding teams in the country, I mean, we out-rebounded them by a, a few, but we needed to out, really out-rebound them a lot more. So there's plenty of areas teams can't expose us on, and they're, whatever they do well, that's what they've been getting to. We, we haven't been able to do a great job taking away what another team does well, to be honest with you. You talked a lot about turnovers after the game, too. Just how much of that is an emphasis with the way that Ole Miss is able to steal the ball? Yeah, I, they they do have some guys that can go take the ball, and they, they shoot every team I've ever coached against that Chris Beard coaches. They play hard. It's no exception. Every time I've watched his teams play, they're one of the hardest playing teams. So playing hard, getting steals goes hand in hand. He, you know, their system's been able to turn people over every year he's been in college basketball. So it, it's definitely concerning because we've had some issues with turnovers. And, and as bad as our defense was against Kentucky, our turnovers might have been even worse because that 
got their transition offense going, and it, it really hurt our offense too. So we, we were awful defensively. We were equally as bad, if not worse, in taking care of the ball against Kentucky. So both of those points have been made to our guys, and we, we got to do a much better job taking care of the ball. Another thing they do really well is block shots. Is that something you can can combat, or is it more just your speed against their size? Or no, I, I do think we got to. We, we've made that point. I mean, you look at their two centers that you know they will go small ball five and play break field there some, but when they're playing Cisse and um, Sharp, I mean Sharp's seven five and Cisse seven footer that moves and they have real rim protection. So when we get it, I told our guys a block shot at the rim is just almost as bad as a turnover. It ignites the break the other way. So, you know, we've got to make better rim decisions. We didn't make great ones against Kentucky all the time. We got in there, jumped in the air, got caught, turned it over on a live ball, jumped in there, threw it up, got blocked because we've gotten a great shot blocker for Kentucky as well. So when we do get to the rim and the shot blockers in front of us, we've got to make better rim decisions. The, the play is not to just – shoot with a 7-5 guy in front of you or 7-1, whatever Cissé is. Like, we've got to find the open man. we got to get to two feet. we got to find cutters. we got to, we got to be smart with our decisions once we get in the paint at the rim. Thanks, All right, thanks.